My name is John Myatt. In my time I've been a teacher, a painter and an art forger. In 1999 I was jailed for forging over 200 paintings, a crime that rocked the art world and I paid the price for it. These days I paint in the style of the great masters and sell them legally as honest fakes. And I've started teaching the tricks of my trade to aspiring artists because all painters can learn by copying others. Today, we'll be working in the style of David Hockney, one of the world's greatest living artists. I'm living on the edge. Oh, look, I've gone over it. <laughs> You're on the edge. <laughs> oh, shush. You are a bully. Hello. In 1955, an 18-year-old boy from a small industrial town in North Yorkshire sold his first ever painting. It was a portrait of his father, and it marked the beginning of a career that would establish David Hockney as one of the world's most innovative and successful contemporary artists. In the early 60s, Hockney was the Arthur terrible of British art, where his highly individualistic work and upfront homosexuality brought both controversy and critical acclaim. But it was to be in America that he first achieved real popular success. In the later 1960s, he produced a series of paintings which established his international reputation, the pool paintings. And it's this period that we'll be focusing on today. Hockney's image of a Californian pool is strikingly flat, but this almost abstract quality is fractured by one moment in time, the splash itself. And there's just a hint of real isolation and loneliness in this painting. Today we've come to a house in Surrey built in 1967, exactly the same year that a bigger splash was painted. It's the perfect setting for my students to try to recreate one of Hockney's most iconic images. My name's Hilary Archer. I'm from Fisher's Pond, just outside Winchester. And I'll have a go at anything. My name's Ned Dupper. I'm from London and I'm a mural painter. I'm Laura Hanna. I'm from Kent and I'm a psychiatric nurse. To complete a painting in a day depends on the size of the painting, so I'm hoping it's going to be a miniature. Uh, something scary would be going back to the uh, abstract theme. Art in itself is a relaxation therapy for me. <laughs> I'm particularly excited by today's challenge because when I was a student, many of us looked towards David Hockney for inspiration. My students have got one day and a set of acrylics to come up with their version of a Hockney. And I hope that they're as inspired by him as I was. Hilary, Laura, Ned, welcome to this poolside setting. Today, your task is to recreate the style of... Oh, <laughs> David <Chase>. Hockney. <laughs> oh, wow. This is the last of the Splash series from, uh, from the late 1960s. He started off with a small one called Splash, and then a little Splash, and then the last one here, A Bigger Splash, and that's the title. I think this is the one everybody remembers, The Bigger Splash. We're going to be using quite a lot of masking tape when we get round to it. Have you used that before? You have. It's the only way to get a straight line. <laughs> and what about sponge rollers? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Well, it's yeah. sponge rollers are us today. So, can I ask you, Hilary, your thoughts, please? I can't paint a straight line, so I'm very glad we're using masking tape, but I think it's a horrendous problem for me, I really do. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. You were hoping for Constable, there weren't you? I was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. I'm really excited. I can't wait to start painting, really. Just want to get the paint on the canvas now. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So it's, it's horizontal lines I'm looking for, bold horizontals, really, aren't they? And, and create the shape with a sponge roller, use the masking tape, you know, burnish it down because it will bleed over the canvas and Hockney let it bleed over the canvas deliberately. Yeah. Um, and then I hope most of you will find one kind of illustrative moment in the painting, a little joke really, where he gets all pictorial and you have a sort of focus there. But look at the way you've got a lovely horizontal band comes right across here and then suddenly, whoops, it's yeah. not on the picture plane suddenly, it's in perspective. Yeah. It was always, it's just a joke yeah. that, he, that he plays on everybody and it's a way of exposing ways and means. A lot of this painting, I think, was actually about saying, look, here are the tools of my trade, this is how I use them. 
Right, let's get going to try to recreate this Californian poolside. In today's weather, you really have to use your imagination, but it's blue skies, happy days. So let's go. When I first saw the Hockney, I nearly died. I really did. Well, without the splash, you get uh, a rather flat painting, but that, that adds the depth and, uh, uh, and the whole sort of, it brings it to life, as it were. It wasn't anything too scary, so I'm really, really pleased about it. The very first thing I'd like you to do is to mask off, say, two or three inches, that, about a knuckle yeah. to a finger's worth, all the way around the edge. This is a format, about that much there. A format that Hockney used th throughout the late 60s. He frequently left an area of blank canvas and enclosed the painting, the image, within that area. And can I suggest, if you haven't done this before, burnish with the with the back of your nail like that. So burnish it down will reduce the bleeding. Oh, burn. really? Yes. Any way you fancy, get that tape on that canvas and we'll do it now, shall we? Perfect. Good. Masking tape is really important today. In fact, there's more masking to be done than painting. It's particularly important to protect the edge of the canvas so you can use it as a frame, just like Hockney did. Does it matter if I've got more space here than here? Yes, it does. Be Yes, it does. Why don't you make a kind of um, rule of thumb? So from the top of the pencil ah. to the image is there. It's there. OK, with, make a mark, any old how you like, but that's how you check it. Oh, dear. Now, moving on then, if we may, Hilary, excuse us, I know you're still masking up. Will you just look at your composition, reference the Hockney over there, and just let me see some horizontal lines, just possibly with pencil, and they don't have to be dead straight, but just roughly give yourself an idea where you're going to make, for instance, the top line of the pool here. I mean, I guess you could, you know, you could use something like a, maybe we could use something like a coin here, could we? I haven't got any money. Well, you're not having Can I borrow? No, you can't. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I'm a poor penniless wretch. Okay, I'll see what I've got. I don't know. I have a pound. Oh. No, that'll do better. Don't be! <laughs> Look, the complaints department closed some considerable time ago, so... At the moment, I'm just drawing the outline of my perspective and how I'm just going to get everything to flow, really, and trying to decide what parts of this landscape I'm going to draw. <laughs> if I'm going to get the building in or what part of the pool I'm going to have. So, tough decisions at the moment. <laughs> All these have got to be equal from the edge of the canvas, each of these strips of masking tape. And somehow, I'm not as good as the others at doing this. That looks right. Yes. So if you've got your outside area masked off, now's the time to work from the top to the bottom of the painting. So I think the first area you're now going to mask will be the sky area. And then you're going to have to mix me a nice blue and white colour to indicate the sky. That'll be the time when we get the rollers out and start putting the paint on. So this is where we go for our first our okay, first paint. attempt at colour. Okay. Oh, <laughs> let me know when you put it on. I just can't wait to see it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, oh, no, I think you should be protecting this. I think you should have protected all this as well. Okay, I only did two sides. Yeah, but I, I think, you know, by the time we get the roller on here, if we bleed over that edge oh, there, okay. we've, we've had it. Right, -o. I'll do that first. While I'm painting. Yeah. My confidence is diminishing slightly. I might borrow his... Uh, his palm trees rather than a, a sort of gothic tower over there, so uh, yeah, we'll see. Oh, the sun's coming out. Oh, that's a nice blue sky, isn't it? Gosh, that's lovely. <laughs> Definitely I, like the English I've seen summer. blue skies like that on holiday. 
definitely this year. This is the English summer sky. That we never had. Yeah, the one in my imagination every day. That one. <laughs> watch that edge, Laura. Watch that edge. Watch that edge. You're getting pretty close. I know. It's OK. I'm sorry to create a sense of tension. I'm living on the edge. Oh, oh look, I've gone over it. <laughs> We're all living on, living on the edge. I'm living on the edge of the masking tape. The use of the sponge roller in the 1960s was a godsend to those artists who were trying to create a flat surface and also a kind of detached look at the process of painting itself. This is what Hockney was trying to get. Being detached enabled him to take an ironic look at the whole process of painting and this is what he was trying to do with our painting. We're going to turn the painting round now, rotate the painting slightly and now start the whole process again using the roller in a different way. So work on this surface where we need to blend quickly here. That's it. You see it's blending quite nicely. It is. In that far corner too. Watch that edge! I'm so sorry to shout at you, but you're gonna, you've done it again. Make me a bag of nerves. <laughs> you've done it again! <laughs> you are a bully. In the summer of 1960, the young Hockney went to see the Picasso retrospective exhibition in London. Maybe this was a moment that changed his artistic direction forever. He was awed by the way that Picasso jumped from one style into another and reassured that an artist as great as Pablo Picasso could use things like poetry, magazines or his own social and sexual life as the basis for creating his art. Hockney was a natural fit into the swinging 60s. Trendy clothes, trademark circular glasses were the outward signs of a fundamental rebellion against social convention and against artistic tradition. It marked the beginning of a deeply personal exploration of his own life through his art. The challenge early days like this is actually to establish the composition quickly and to overcome any kind of fear you might have about how to use masking tape. Just don't get frightened of the process and I think everything will stay on track. Ned, I'm going to come into your painting in a, in a most... I'm just so worried about that edge. Oh, yeah, can we no, just, put, can yeah, I just briefly protect else. that edge for you before we have a catastrophe? Thank you. Okay. Just gives you a little bit more. Yeah. Okay, good. Lovely, lovely edge you've got. Oh, I love it. Actually, it's too good. Too good. Too good. It's me and the burnishing, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. I'd like to show you something that didn't involve burnishing. Something I painted in the style of an artist I have long admired. Here's a painting by Raoul Dufy from uh, 1938. Raoul Dufy painted in, in the area around Cannes, Nice, uh, throughout this whole period. Uh, the interesting thing actually is that Germans blew up this casino during the war but he continued to paint it as though it was still there. He loved it so much. He had the little cars coming up, all the rich people turning up to gamble. But of course the main thing about this is the colour, isn't it? I just love this kind of stuff. It's good time painting, it makes you feel happy to look at it. And it's clever as well. And amongst all that, you know, you've got this kind of subtlety of of tone harmony. I mean, I flatter myself that I, I did it, but, you know, he did it first. Um, and it's just a lovely, lovely way to, to enjoy painting. Hockney used photography to help him with the most crucial part of his painting, the splash. Right now, all get into a comfortable position. Your camera's ready. Are you ready, Sam? Off you go. Nice one, much better oh, than lovely. This is lovely. Hey, come and have a look at this one. This is a really nice big splash here. That's my splash. That's a really big one, isn't it? Isn't that a good one? 
Brilliant. I'm sure David Hockney would have used photographs like this, Polaroids indeed, to do yeah. it. He would. It was a trip to Los Angeles in 1964 that would pave the way for Hockney's international success. He immediately fell in love with Southern California. Nowhere could have been more different to his native Yorkshire with its leaden skies, or indeed London for that matter. And maybe also in Los Angeles he felt it easy to express his homosexuality. But I think, above all, it was the easygoing lifestyle of the swimming pools, the modern architecture, and the big, big blue skies that inspired him to paint a bigger splash in 1967. During his California period, Hockney the artist turned into a celebrity whose life and art intermingled. I wonder if any of these three will ever reach such dizzy heights. It's been really exciting to try out these new techniques here, the sponge roller, the masking tape, and even the plunge into the pool with the Polaroid photographs. But we're over halfway through now, and we still haven't got the canvases covered. And time is of the essence, and time is running out. Don't get too meticulous, we yeah. just don't have the time. Okay. That's the only trouble. And I'll tell you why, it's because the splash, the splash is where the Worth. fun is. So that's what I'd like to see, you know, before okay. we wind up. All right. The final challenge is the splash itself. Without it, the painting doesn't really work and it's crucial to get it in the right place. Let's just figure out, Laura, you and I, Where's the splash going to be? Is it going to start here, going to start here, there or there? Whatever it does, I want it to break this black line that you've so okay. beautifully put in. That's what that line's there for, to be broken. I want it to be in line with this corner. I want it to be here. That's the splash? Yep. Okay. That's where my splash is so, going to go. Go and have a look out. <laughs> like, that's, that's Splash City, yep. Arizona. In line with... Well, I think you just start making a few white marks, but cautiously. The, okay. the, the thing about this painting was it was kind of, you know, they talk about irony these days and things are ironic. This was 40 years ago, almost to the day he was painting this, oh. and it was ironic then. He was painting something that happened instantaneously, so slowly. And that's what amused him enormously. I'd rather go and jump in the pool at the moment and make my own splash than paint it. It's going to be tough. I put my masking tape over here, so as you see, I've got no base to the house. Let's leave all that now and just put the splash in. Right. Well, if we've got time, we'll come back to those things, but I think we've got to have some fun today. So let's find out where the splash is, make that decision, and put it in for me. Slowly, cautiously, carefully. We don't want the splash itself took him a fortnight to paint. You've got 20 minutes. In a moment, I'm going to put the splash in, and I know where I'm going to put it, because I've got the um, urn there, and I want the splash to be about there, so that it just comes by that window. But I've got to put some paint on there, or else my splash won't work. David Hockney would probably have had quite a few photographs of splashes on the side of his easel or even on the side of the painting to reference and help him to accurately portray the splash itself, which is exactly what Ned's doing. Ned, there's, there's actually quite a variety of marks if you look at the painting close up. Yeah. There's dots uh, sort of moving away from point, and then there's these lovely lines that you've started to establish here, there's quite a few of those coming across. Um, I, would, I would strengthen, strengthen almost the base, total yeah. white, if you can. Yeah. Use the emulsion over there, yeah. strengthen it down. But then a different kind of mark 
you know, a, a stroked one, yeah. a dotted, dotted one, one, and so forth. I'm really enjoying the splash, actually, because I use my fingers, but now I'm just using the end of a paintbrush to get a few more dots. And then I'm going to use my paintbrushes to do some lines. The splash is not too bad, actually. You'd never believe it was a person who made the splash, but the splash itself isn't too bad. Um, I'm still a bit rocky with my masking tape, trying to put a few things right. Fighting the clock. This exercise isn't just about getting it right technically, it's also about whatever kind of narrative you choose to read into the painting. I've got the basic painting there, I think, in my perspective, but I don't know, there's no story to it yet. <laughs> so, got a long way to go, really. But it's coming along. Hilary, I think, has struggled throughout with the, with the masking tape process. I'm very pleased with Laura, and I'm very pleased with Ned. And I think the two of them are, are getting close to a good result. I'm slightly apprehensive about showing John. I, I, I'd, uh, I'd like to have something slightly, slightly sort of better, I suppose, to show him, but... I'm not nearly finished, but I want to be finished. I can't leave it if it's not finished. <laughs> I'm not ready to show John. David Hockney's never stood still. In the 1970s, he experimented with portraiture. In the 1980s, with photo montage. In the 90s, with theatre and set design. And in the new millennium, he's taken up watercolour painting. A strange move for an artist who once said watercolour as a medium was fit only for Sunday painters. Well, I'm really looking forward to seeing what's happened, so it's time to wind it up. OK, everybody, brushes down, masking tape off. This is it. This is where you stop working. Oh. Come on. Ned, get that brush down. <laughs> <laughs> the moment of truth. Have they managed to turn a dull English day into a Californian dream? Right, well, we're all gathered together to look at the finished paintings. Not framed, but Hockney wouldn't have minded. Here we go. What do you think? Well, there's a few bits I like. I like the edges here. Yep. OK, I'll, get, I'll agree with that. Nice edge. Nice edge. All the way around. The sky's good. not too bad. The sky's good. I wish I'd have had time to do a tree. Yep. Um, I've had a bit of trouble with my masking tape, as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And I wish I could have done some more, because I haven't finished it, obviously. No. Um, I am I'm quite s s sad for you, really. In, in, in some cases, I mean, the colours, when I saw these lovely oranges go on, you know, orange and the blue, the complementary colour, I thought, ooh, how lovely. And just individual little moments uh, across the painting do look very Hockney-like, you know, that, the way that edge is kind of bleeding across and the blue and the black over the blue and the lovely little white moment there, a, a transition. Yes, I it's like really that, nice. It? I mean, it's just a lovely area. But for my money, it's just too clumsy um, uh, along here. And I don't, you know, this here. That was instead uh, of the deck chair. It's nice to see at least a part that we know if you had got time on your hands and a little bit more patience, uh, you could have come up with a really good result. I was fighting against my own style of painting and um, I found it very hard, but very enjoyable. Ned, your Hockney, what do you think? At first glance, uh, not too distressed by it, but um, yeah, quite, quite happy, would have liked a bit more time, but uh, you know, you can't have everything. I think possibly Hockney wouldn't have used quite so many per perspective cues. Mm. I'm only guessing, but I, I would have thought the pool could well have come out straight at this angle here. Perhaps we could make a little, we could have made a little bit more of the splash down here. I was, I've yep. seen kind of calm, cool and collected Ned all around here, beautifully done. I was hoping to see fiery, 
expressive Ned, you know, in in the splash. And I agree. I, yeah. Maybe that's just one point we could have improved. When yep. the painting comes back to you, perhaps you can spend a bit more time with that. But Perfect. on the whole, a real result. Nice tropical trees up there. Lovely, even paint finish right across here. It's absolutely perfect. And again, with more time, we could have yep. worked these moments out indeed. Yep. I feel I've moved on uh, as much as I feel I can achieve something which a day ago or last week I, I wouldn't believe in myself to be done. Laura, you're David Hockney. Here we go. Wow! Great. Good! Thank you. Laura, what do you think? It's not half bad. I'm it's... really, really pleased. Yes, I think so too. There's so much to admire here, Laura. I love the way you've got nice, sharp, masked edges here and a lovely, lovely big splash which actually sets off all these other uh, horizontal and vertical moments right the way over over the canvas beautifully and if I may say so I really like this area over here an area of texture against an area of flatness another kind of this is how we do it moment from David Hockney just the kind of thing I think he would have done and appreciated and asked us to join in with the fun of an artist showing you this is how I do hedges <laughs> this is how I do buildings you know and th that's what it's about and I think you've captured a lot of that here if we'd had a bit more time and something here that cast a shadow we'd have another little joke about oh, I don't know something that was on what looked like a flat surface but was actually because it was there suggesting that it was a, a, a surface that moved in perspective so a real good result, Laura. Thank well you. done, congratulations. Thank you. I definitely think I will try painting the Hockney again. I, I can't wait to get home actually and try it. I really want to start researching him and it's, it's inspired me. I'm very pleased with today's work. Personally, for me, it took me back 40 years to when I was an art student and inspired by David Hockney, we picked up our sponge rollers and got out our masking tape. Hilary, I think, was working against the grain of her personality. She's got something like a Hockney, but the other two, I think, have really captured the essence of it. You look at their paintings and there you are, back in California, and it's 1967. Hilary paid the price for messing up her masking tape. Ned! was technically brilliant, but he couldn't quite let go and make a real big splash, and Laura surprised herself with a painting that I think comes closest to a Hockney. But which of them was the best painting? Well, that's for you to decide. <laughs>